بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions We, are, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us My brothers and sisters, many times we are unhappy not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us, but because we begin to compare ourselves with others around us. Yet, if we were to look at the previous nations and the generations, we would realize that they were happier, yet they had less than us, if you take a look at it. What is important for us is to focus on what we have, to focus on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us, and to focus on those who have less than us. In this way, we will definitely be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever He has given us. Let's take a look at the verses of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making mention of so many favors that He has bestowed upon mankind and jinkind in Surah Al-Rahman. He then says, Which is it of the favors of your Lord? Do you deny, O oh mankind and jinkind? Is there any favor of Allah that you deny? And Allah mentions them one after the other. He speaks about the sun and the moon, the creation of entire creation, and everything He has made for us, and heaven, and what lies within the heaven. This is the favor of Allah upon us. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن in Surah Ibrahim, he says, if you were to try and count the favors of Allah, you will never be able to count them. You will not be able to circumscribe them. You won't be able to jot them down. And the challenge is, if you take a pen and a paper and start writing down the gifts of Allah upon you, the list is endless. Every day you will have to be writing and you will not come to an end. And it will not come to an end. So this is something that Allah has indeed indicated and drawn our attention to in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, mankind is not only oppressive, but he is ungrateful as well. He shows a lot of ingratitude. On social media, mashallah, every week, every few days, we receive messages. And some of these messages are authentic, some of them are not authentic. A lot of us would actually benefit from some of these powerful messages. Sometimes we forward them without even thinking. And sometimes, mashallah, they are extremely beneficial and they do help. One such message doing its rounds, and I'm going to share it with you today because I believe it has in it what the topic is and what we've chosen today to speak on. And it is to focus really on what you have, what you definitely do have. If you take a look at the kings of a foretime, we don't want to look at the average men of a long time ago. We want to look at the kings. We want to look at those who had the lot, Qarun and the likes. We want to take a look at what they had and compare it to what you and I have today. In order to be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have in terms of quality, much more than all of them put together. Have you ever thought of it? Maybe quantity wise indeed, Allah says in the Quran, they were more powerful than you, they had more than you in terms of quantity. They, but in terms of quality, and in terms of ease and facilitation, we definitely have much more than them. Let's take a look at it. If you start off by looking at Cleopatra, who was one of these queens of Egypt, and the amount of jewelry she had. Today, if she were to walk into one of the jewelry stores here in our own city, I'm sure she would be shocked at what she sees. Yes, she had a lot. She might have had more in terms of 
quantity, in terms of weight of kilos as a person. But to be honest, take a look at the quality of what there is, how dazzling it's become, how precise it's become. And yet we complain, there's nothing happening, there's nothing here, nothing there. Subhanallah, how much do you want, oh man? How much is it that will fill your belly or your mouth, oh man? You need to realize Allah has bestowed upon us a lot such that if the kings of aforetime who are mentioned in the uh, biblical texts or in the Quran, in this previous scriptures, we will realize that indeed they would be baffled by what they see today. Take a look, for example, at Kisra. This Kisra who was the leader known for his bedding and his sleep. He was known for his bedding, his sleep. He had a beautiful bedding. If he were to recline on one of the restonic mattresses we have today, your bed in your own home with the duvet that you have and the pillow, whether it is, you know, there are five, six different types of pillows. So much so you enter an ordinary hotel and they have a huge selection of pillows. What do you want? Would you like the one that goes down and up as your head moves? Would you like the one that is, they call it the, the memory foam? Would you like the one which is feather? Would you like the one which actually has in it a little pieces of uh, wool put together? Together, what would you like? Imagine your bedding. I'm quite convinced that if Kisra had to come in and witness or have a night's rest in your own bed in your own house, I'm sure he would start wondering where on earth all his was. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. We've been bestowed. We have cotton sheets. We have blankets. We have so many duvets. We have so much in terms of goodness. Take a look at what Allah has given us. My brothers and sisters, it's important for us Really, to thank Allah for what He's given us. Yes, and take a look at those who don't even have a bedding from amongst those who are around us. The refugees, those who are struggling from Syria and Iraq, those who have been driven out of their homes by the oppressors, those who are from lands where war is taking place, who literally have nothing they had in the past. Take a look at the wars of North Africa, whether they're in Libya or Egypt or anywhere else. What has this done? It's come with a lot of destruction. People have lost their homes. They've lost their property. All this is something un-Islamic. We are not supposed to be destroying. We are not supposed to be killing. We are supposed to be mindful of human life and the ownership of their property. But take a look at them and where are we sitting? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his favor upon us and upon them as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let us see difficult days. But Allah promises in the Quran that if you are going to be ungrateful, then indeed what do you expect besides snatching away of those gifts of Allah? Allah gives you something. You're not grateful. He says, what do you want? Let's listen to the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is a beautiful verse in the Quran. If you are going to be thankful, grateful, show gratitude, indeed we will bestow you with increase in that favor. But if you are not grateful, no gratitude, ingratitude, disbelief, turn away from Allah. He says our punishment is severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Take a look at Caesar. In his days, he was well known for him being fanned. You know, the fans from the heat. There were so many of the slave girls who used to stand around him with the fans and fan him down. Today, we have a fan. You press a button and it's on. Another thing, we have air conditions such that if you were to close the doors and if you were to decrease the temperature, you would literally feel like you're in the North Pole. In the middle of summer, you would need something warm to cover yourself in order to sleep. We are spoiled. Don't you have far better than what Caesar had? And yet he was one of those powerful, wealthy leaders of the time. We have more in terms of quality, definitely. A touch of a button, next thing everything becomes cool. Take a look at the ancient Arabians. When they needed to drink cold water, for example, they used to put it into a little skin and put that under the ground in order for it to become cool cool today you have ice you have ice packs you have cold water you have so cold water in the middle of the heat in the desert wherever you are and yet we're not thankful to allah we will still miss salatul fajr at will we will still not dress appropriately just because we don't realize that allah has bestowed upon us so much we will still lie cheat deceive we will still continue in our sinful ways of adultery and gambling and whatever else it is and drugs and May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May he safeguard us. Really, these are the gifts of Allah. 
Like we said, just the air conditioning unit, you enter the motor vehicle. Sometimes we are so spoiled with the air conditioning unit in the motor vehicle that on an ordinary day, on an ordinary day, we will not be able to survive without turning this thing on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We have definitely become people who don't realize these beautiful gifts that Allah has bestowed upon us. One might say it's man, it's technology. Well, Allah is the one who bestowed man with the mind, with the brain. And this is why Qarun's mistake, what was Qarun's mistake? His mistake was he said, Indeed, whatever I have in terms of wealth, I've been given it because of my own brain, my own wealth, sorry, my own uh, intellect. And Allah says, does he not see that Allah has destroyed those before him who had more wealth, more might than him? It was Allah who bestowed you with the brain in the first place. So don't think you came first in your class because it was you who was bright. It was Allah who gave you the brain. And then you achieved because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed you with that beautiful brain. So take a look at Qarun. What was he known for? He was known for the fact that he had so much of wealth that the keys to the treasures, the keys to the locks of the treasures that he owned were so heavy that a group of men would find them difficult or would find it difficult to carry. That's how much it was. Had he come today, he would have noticed much more wealth than his. Much more wealth than his. And you know how it's resembled? By a little plastic card. Imagine, no need for men to get tired. No need for anything else. We're not speaking of the halal and haram aspect of Islamic finance and non-Islamic finance. We are just saying a large amount of money depicted by a little card. Have you noticed that? Subhanallah, look how it's been facilitated. No one needs to carry on, you know, carrying the keys of their treasures everywhere, wherever they go as Qarun used to do. Allah's made it easy. It's so easy for you. And like I said, we're not speaking of the permissible prohibited of it because that's a topic of its own. But what we are saying is today a person can be so wealthy and you won't even know. Subhanallah, because he just has to carry his card. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease to us. May he protect us from the pangs of inflation. I mean, I called it that intentionally because wallahi, it drowns people. It, they actually, we have been in this part of the world through difficulty already where we've known what inflation is all about. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all goodness in terms of sustenance and to bestow upon us the best in terms of his rizq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. I mean, if you take a look at the people of Mesotopo, uh, the people of Mesopotamia. If you take a look at the chariots they had, they were known. The place was known for beautiful chariots, you know, pulled by lovely horses and so on. It was actually amazing, magnificent. They used to pride themselves. The wheel was invented and they used to pull themselves and it was so lovely. They could actually carry on and it was something picturesque, really beautiful. If they had to see one Toyota of today, they would be gone. That's it. One little starlet, you know, starlet is one of the smallest of the vehicles you can actually buy here. Something that is minor, one of the lightest micras that you have, the Nissans. If they had to see one of those, they'll forget about all their chariots. Don't you agree? Allah has bestowed upon us much more in terms of ease, in terms of facility, in terms of quality than them. They may have had a million of these chariots. What happened? Where is the gratitude? A lot of us seated here, either ourselves or our fathers or forefathers. Perhaps they couldn't afford a motor vehicle. Perhaps they didn't have it for many years. And perhaps they used to catch public transport. And even beyond that, they used to walk. Do you know that? And yet today we sit and we deny the gifts and the favors of Allah by missing our salah, by wholesale, turning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholesale. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease, goodness. Every time another vehicle comes out, you find it is much more comfortable. It has in it much more facility. Now it has in it what you and I would call satellite navigation. They call it the GPS, the TomTom, -tom, the Garmin, whatever you'd like to call it. It's on your phone as well. Where would you ever in the wildest of your dreams, even 20 years ago, 50 years ago, have dreamt that there will come a time when we will not be able to do without a phone telling us turn left after 500 meters and you have now arrived at your destination. Those of us who might go to countries we don't know, we no longer need someone to tell us, you know what, these are the directions. Not at all. 
You need them to send you a location on WhatsApp and all you do is you open the location and you say you want to drive there. The next best thing you know, it shows you the traffic. It shows you which route to use. Who on earth would have dreamt that some time back? All the kings of aforetime put together would be dizzy if they saw that. Subhanallah. They would probably think we're living in a heaven. We're living in a paradise. If we had to talk about it, they would be totally confused. But we have it. It's in your pockets, my brothers and sisters. It's really there. How do we take this for granted when Allah has bestowed upon us? This navigation should be taking you to your destination of the masjid five times a day. It should be taking you to Jannah, really. It should be showing you, don't make this turn, don't make that turn. That is thanking Allah for his gift. That is called gratitude. When we understand where we're heading, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Take a look at the people of Baghdad and Qurtuba. They were known for knowledge. They were known for their books. You know, they say the, 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 the black rivers that flowed when the books were thrown into those rivers because of the ink, the amount of ink that had actually flown. Subhanallah, they had books, libraries upon libraries. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, do you know the little chip that happens to be in your phone, in your little mobile phone, 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, holds more than 200 of those libraries if you wanted it to be in there. Do you know that? This is a gift of Allah. Today, their library is put together, one hard drive of a few terabytes and it's over. Imagine, what do we do? The knowledge came to us. This is what it is. We still don't know. We are more ignorant than them, yet knowledge is at our fingertips. Subhanallah. Much more ignorant. And even if we do know things, we don't practice upon it. So it's important we ask Allah's forgiveness. And we ask Allah's guidance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be thankful. This is why one of the du'as, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Oh Allah, oh my Rabb, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for the favors that you have bestowed upon me. Grant me the ability. Because one is to say, oh Allah, I thank you, I thank you. Don't just pay lip service to it. Be really thankful by showing it in your action towards Allah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. I am here, I pray, I take my time when it comes to fulfilling the obligations unto Allah. I think not only twice or thrice, but that before sinning, but I don't even sin. Because I thank Allah. And whenever I have faulted as a human being, I quickly repent to Allah because I want to thank Him. I want to be grateful to Him. I know I have faulted as a human being, but I still want to thank Allah. So I quickly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at the kings. They used to send messengers and they used to pride themselves. I can get the message from here to Mecca in four days. The minimum was three days. A message from Medina to Mecca, three days. That was like the fastest horseback you could ever have. Message got there. Today, three seconds and the whole world has your message. You have WhatsApp, you have Blackberry, you have, you name it, email and female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. You name it, it's there. It's Allah's gift, really. It is. Thank Allah for it. It is, you know, a very fast way of letting the whole world know. Today we have social media. How am I talking to you today? I've, I've drawn an example which was cited on the social networks. And here we are sharing it and trying to make sense out of it and trying to look at which angle it is that we have more. Because one might argue that Allah says in the Quran, they had more and they were more powerful. Yes, indeed. In terms of quantity, they definitely did have more. And in terms of their physical beings, they were definitely more healthier and more fit than us. But in terms of ease, facility and so on, we have much more than them. My brothers and sisters, they prided themselves at that time. They were so, so happy. They used to show off how quickly they could get the message across. And they used to get across a good message. The Prophet ﷺ, he sent messengers across the globe to different parts of the globe. How long did they take? They went for months on end. And they went with the message. And that was the way. Today, we haven't even used the quick messenger system that we have to spread one good message of Islam. One good message. Where is it? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Another very important factor. It is not good enough to send a good message on a Friday alone. Let's change that. Let it be random any day, every day. You don't have to greet each other only on a Friday. We've made Islam a religion of Friday. That's it. Jumu'ah comes, we greet. Jumu'ah comes, we send a good message. For what? Let it be every day. You might not see the next Friday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand this. An-Nu'man, who was a king in Arabia, he used to 
he used to boast about how he had cold water they used to keep for him and he had this cold water from a special uh, skin that he used to drink from today wallahi you just go around the corner there there is a filter you press a button and the coldest of filtered water is out what happens Nu'man, if he came here he would think we are all the kings subhanallah really he would want a filter from you and i May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Yet, we still do not understand the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mansur, he was one of those leaders. And you know what? He used to have hot and cold water mixed for him to have a bath. People used to bring it hot and cold and they mix it. And it was a big deal because people used to bath with cold water. To be honest, this business of having hot water is something very recent. So people used to bath with cold. He had the luxury of people mixing it. Today, mashallah, you just need a mixer. Subhanallah. You open the tap before you know it is warm. You don't even realize the gift of Allah upon you. My brothers and sisters, pause for a moment. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank Allah. That water that comes from that tap. Do you know the clean water, the drinking water, the water we bath with in this part of the world, really you can drink that water actually. That's how clean it is. People across the globe drink water that's not, that looks murky. The water we have is not even murky. Subhanallah. We are spoiled. But still we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who dreamt about things, they searched for these items their whole life. I want this and they worked for it. Today, subhanallah, tip, fingertips. You just go onto the internet. What do you want? eBay or Amazon or bid or buy whatever you'd like and next thing you have the item not only the item but the best deal and and the following day it's being shipped to you and a week later dhl has it delivered to your doorstep and you still don't thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is reality my brothers and sisters we hope and pray that we've learned a lesson and i really hope we can focus on what we have focus on what you do have you have got a lot more than all the others who were considered powerful they were considered kings that was the height of luxury at the time we have it and we even have more take a look at the clothing the type of material you have subhanallah it's amazing it has progressed over time something we should thank allah for and let's never take any of the gifts allah has bestowed upon us for granted may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this world and the next may he grant us jannah